Mises called interventionism destructionism, and in practice, all interventionist measures end up causing destruction. However, some interventionist measures are more obviously directed at restricting or reducing production. Clearly, if an interventionist measure restricts what a society produces, then it impoverishes everyone, especially the working masses, to the extent that resources, factors of production, are diverted from efficient lines of production to inefficient ones. Scarce means are employed in the wrong places. And the final result of all this is that we all ultimately become poorer. Import tariffs, protectionist measures in international trade, are a typical example of such restrictive measures. And Mises comments on them. In the last course, we studied Ricardo's law of association, which is simply a generalization Mises infers from the law of comparative advantage. According to this law, free trade between two areas or countries is mutually beneficial. Even in the extreme case that one area is more efficient than the other in all lines of production, as long as each specializes in the activity in which it has the greatest relative comparative advantage. So, even if I am more efficient than you at everything, I am sure there are some activities at which I am much more efficient, others at which I am somewhat more efficient, and still others at which I am only a little more efficient. In that case, it is best if I devote myself to the activity at which I am much more efficient, and you focus on the activity at which, though I am more efficient than you, the difference is less marked. If we do that, and we exchange the product of our effort, then we both come out ahead. An extraordinary surgeon, who is an expert at curing patients by operating on them, but is also a very good anesthesiologist, would be doing very bad business if he wanted to do everything himself, because it would be at the expense of performing brain surgery and saving lives. However, if he concentrates on saving lives and allows the anesthesiologist, though not as skilled, to take care of that part of the job, then both come out ahead as a result of specialization and exchange. This idea can be transposed to the sphere of international trade. In fact, in the history of economic thought, the discovery of this essential idea happened the other way around. First, the English economist David Ricardo made the discovery in the sphere of international trade, and later Mises extended it to the relationships between all human beings. What is clear is that protectionism, the establishment of import tariffs on foreign goods or of more or less explicit obstacles to international free trade, harms everyone in the sense that it restricts production. It pushes up costs. We must pay more for the things we need. And it does not even benefit those it apparently privileges. We hear many people say, let us impose a tariff to protect infant Spanish industries, which cannot compete with foreign ones. A tariff is not even helpful, because once it is imposed, the process invariably has the same result. Ultimately, there is a misallocation of resources to production lines where they should not be. Imagine that in Spain, tariffs are set to encourage the production of computers, when it is much cheaper and more efficient to produce computers in Singapore. In the end, workers are brought to Spain, and plants are built here to produce something inefficient, because Singaporeans do the job much better and more economically than we do. And those protected companies eventually adjust their costs to the new situation hampered by tariffs, and they make the same profit on invested capital as other companies. So in the long run, nothing is gained. There is a misallocation of resources. And as with any protectionist measure, people become hooked, like on a drug. Later, it is very difficult to discontinue the measure, because as you remove the tariff, it becomes clear that the protected companies are houses of cards, that they are not profitable, and that workers must be laid off, and the corresponding resources reallocated. The readjustment and liquidation are very painful. Another restrictive measure Mises cites rests on demagogic arguments, and consists, for instance, of an attempt to help workers via labor legislation, a so-called social gain. Now we are all going to work fewer hours and earn the same amount of money. The number of work hours is reduced. Do not think this has never happened. 
For example, a few years ago, a 35-hour work week was adopted in France, with no change in salaries. What happens when such a measure is adopted? If we are paid the same and we work less, what do you think happens to the real production of goods and services? Does it increase or decrease? Let us be sensible. Obviously, it decreases. In a nutshell, if we are paid the same and we work fewer hours, the total labor cost of our provision of services rises. That is, we are paid much more per hour. If we are paid the same and we work fewer hours, we are paid much more per hour. In the market, workers always tend to be paid the discounted value of their marginal product. Therefore, if employers are forced by law to pay more per hour, the result is, first, a restriction of production, we all become poorer, and second, all of the workers at the margin, who, due to the law, cost more to employ than the value of what they produce, cease to be profitable. They are laid off, or simply not hired. Unemployment climbs sharply. Furthermore, it is absurd to think we can decrease by law the number of working hours and have everything remain the same. Any sensible person, without needing to attend this economics course, and with a little logic, will realize that if we all work less, we are going to produce less, and we cannot improve our standard of living. That is the illusion that is the deception many societies have been subjected to. For instance, Greek society, and to a large extent, Spanish society as well. We think we can live a much better life, enjoy more goods and services each year, buy plasma TVs and new cars, go on trips and so on, while working less and less. This is a fictional illusion fed by politicians, because politicians want us to vote for them. They offer it to us and we fall for it and vote for them. What is revealed? Well, in the case of Greece, it immediately became clear that Greek workers were not competitive with workers in the rest of the European Union countries, and that the system was unsustainable. No one was buying Greek products because they were more expensive. Income fell in Greece. Public revenue fell. In such a situation, sometimes we can maintain the fiction for a while by requesting loans. But sooner or later, lenders realize that the debtor is unable to pay and so they charge higher and higher rates of interest. The time comes when we must face up to harsh reality. Ladies and gentlemen, we must become competitive again. We must reduce costs. We must work more and earn less. But people protest. They say, no, no, I have a right. They seek a social gain, and they go out into the streets to protest. It does not bother me that they go out into the streets to protest. That is like protesting against the law of gravity. Mises' treatment of the destruction of production is one of the best parts of human action. Mises had acquired a great deal of practical experience during his years as the chief economist for the Chamber of Commerce in Vienna, and he very perceptively analyzes the relationships between different phenomena. A connection can exist, for instance, between the phenomena we are discussing. Citizens receive the demagogic offer of the chance to work less and earn the same amount. Everyone votes for the law and it is put into operation. Imagine I ask, who is in favor of earning twice as much and working half as much? We are all in favor of that, but it is an impossibility. Consequently, as we have already learned, we become poorer. Less is produced and unemployment rises. Well, politicians never go beyond the obvious, and as soon as the initial effects appear, they see that citizens actually start buying more and more foreign goods and services, because they are cheaper and of higher quality. And politicians say, this is an unsustainable situation. We are working less, and on top of that, people here are buying foreign goods, and local companies are going bankrupt. So, they start to think, and they exclaim, I've got it! We will prevent people from buying foreign goods and services. We will establish an import tariff. Take note. Interventionist logic brings about adverse effects, and the attempt is made to cancel these out with additional intervention, which in turn gives rise to cumulative effects that are even stronger and more harmful. A measure which restricts production by reducing the number of working hours to 35 a week with no change in wages, drains local products of their competitiveness. The citizens themselves buy foreign products, 
As soon as this becomes clear, we try to prevent foreign products from entering the country. We set import tariffs. And to a severe distortion, we add another. And another. It is like when a petty criminal commits a minor crime, and to cover it up, he commits a more serious one, and then an even more serious one. And before he knows it, he has dug himself into a deep hole he cannot get out of. The same is true of intervention. That is why it is important for societies to be disciplined. Discipline is needed to avoid the demagogic deception of citizens. One of the most important requirements of such discipline is that it be impossible to manipulate the monetary sphere. Well, fortunately for Greece, fortunately for Portugal, fortunately for Ireland, and fortunately for Spain, we are in the Eurozone. As a result, we cannot go on deceiving ourselves like we used to, by devaluing the peseta. Instead, for the first time in history, we must rise to the challenge of making the necessary structural reforms. There is no way around it. The only solution is to become competitive again. And even though politicians want to sweeten the pill, as if they were giving medicine to children and added some sugar to disguise the bitter taste, the sooner we citizens realize we must apply a policy of austerity, starting with ourselves, the better. We need to work more and earn less to again be able to compete with the countries around us and get back on the path of sustained growth.